Picking up where we left off, 1 Thessalonians 5, 12. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Again, Paul wrote about this again in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy the 5th chapter, uh, 17th verse. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. And this came right out of the teaching that Jesus had given to his disciples when he sent them out back in Matthew the 10th chapter, the 5th verse. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food, or as Paul has written, worthy of his hire. Not all have the same calling, not all have the same election, and God has chosen for those that minister in the word to receive double honor, and this is according to the scripture. So those that have dedicated their lives, there are a lot of people that minister the word of God, they don't work in the secular world. They, they've given their entire life unto the study of God's word and unto reaching out by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we're to honor those. We honor those by giving of our resources. And I thank God for this word because it keeps us in balance. Yes, there's many that have taken advantage of this position in the Lord, and they do so by fleecing widows and, and people that don't have even money to give themselves, and they look for opportunities to, to make great uh, amounts of money, great wealth. They end up with huge mansions and private jets. We're not blessing at all that kind of thing. We're talking about the, the needs that there are for the body, food and raiment, food and clothing, the, the needs, necessary things that are needed. That's why he talked about they're worthy of their food being provided. The disciples that went out to minister the word of God to the surrounding towns and uh, the, the neighboring communities, they weren't even supposed to bring extra clothing or extra money with them. They were going to go out and they were going to trust God that God would supply their needs through the ministry so that when they went to somebody's house, the people that they went to minister to, that, that God directed them to in that town or that specific location, he would supply the, the place that they needed to sleep and he would supply their food. He would supply their needs through those that they were ministering the word to and it would be a work of grace. And that's what we're speaking of today. And we thank God that we can honor God's ministry, those who he speaks through and teaches through, just as the word has said, just according to the scripture. Continuing where we left off then in 1 Thessalonians 5.14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Verse 19, do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of of evil. Verse 23, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. And this is a promise that we have that God is doing the work, spirit, soul, body. This is the working of the Lord. This is the order of God that we're born again of the spirit of the word of the living God through the seed of faith. That word that we is sown in our heart. Again, this is why we honor the ministry. We honor those that preach and teach and speak God's word because that is how we are born again. Now God can speak to us by an angel or we can just pick up a, 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 a Bible or a book randomly, but 
more than likely we hear the message through somebody that's speaking. And this is why it doesn't necessarily have to be, we don't have to just honor those that have the title of preachers or pastors or evangelists, because anyone can speak the word of God and they can speak unto us that which causes us to be regenerated, renewed, redeemed. Hallelujah. We hear the word of the testimony of Christ and the, the word of the only begotten son, uh, the first begotten of the father. And that word takes root in our heart. That seed begins to work in our spirit. And those that are joined to the, unto the Lord are one spirit with him. So we are a new creation in Christ Jesus through that word that we receive by faith through grace. Now we have development that's taking place in us just as a newborn babe develops in the womb. We're being changed and transformed and developed into a new creation from the inner man to the outer man. And this is the working spirit, soul, and body. And we see Jesus teaching these things concerning the kingdom of God, even as a seed that's planted over in Mark 4, 26 he said, the kingdom of God is if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. This is the seed of the kingdom that's sowed in the heart of those who are called and elected of the Lord. He himself does not know how, how this working takes place for the earth yields crops by itself. And remember, this is the earth man that God is dealing with. So when he speaks about the earth, he's speaking about the hearts of men and women who are born again of this seed of faith, this seed of the word of God. Uh, this is how it yields crops by itself. This earth, this man, first the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in his sickle because the harvest has come. And so we see the development, the order of God, that it begins in our spirit. And in our spirit, we are incorruptible because of that word that we are joined unto in Christ. We put our faith in Christ, not in our old life, not in our old man, but we put our faith in the Father who has given us the Son freely. Freely, by grace, we've received this great salvation by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. He has given his life for us through the cross that we might be redeemed, that we might be born again by this new and living way. The Spirit of the Son has come unto us through the Holy Spirit. And now we have a new life, a new word, a new testimony, a new uh, way of thinking. Praise God. And we grow and our soul becomes joined unto the spirit. And that's the growth of the kingdom. First the blade, then the, the, the corn, then the full ear. Uh, hallelujah. It becomes fruitful even unto the body where the body is redeemed from corruption. And we come into the, uh, an incorruptible, immortal body through the working of the Son of God, hallelujah, as He comes and appears in us, He changes us and transforms us so that all are not going to sleep, but all shall be changed. Praise God. And this is the mystery of the Lord that's taking place presently today, but we yield our members to the working of the body so that we can be partakers of this divine nature through the working of the Word of God. Finishing up here, 1 Thessalonians 5, 25, brethren, Paul writes, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And this is our greeting unto you that the Lord would be with you, that he'd continue to cause you to prosper, that we would continue to be assembled together by the working of the Spirit, each member in their place, each one doing that which they're called to do by the mind of Christ, hallelujah, building up one another in the faith, loving one another, praying for one another, reaching out to the world as the Lord shows us to bring in a harvest, to show forth the splendor and the glory of the Son of God, hallelujah. And we thank God that he's doing this work. We're joined together with you, Folks, uh, men and women all over this earth who are pressing towards the same goal of the high calling that's in Christ Jesus to see this world changed and transformed, coming out of darkness into the marvelous light of the Lord. Out of the kingdoms of men comes the kingdom of God raising up in strength and victory 
over all enemies, all death, all destruction is being swallowed up in the life, in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ, who comes to make all things new. Praise God. The Lord bless you. We look forward to when we will be with you again.